you know, you know, being in the space, you know, one of the things that comes with it is that you have the ability to impact lives. And so you kind of talked about how Earn Your Leisure has, you know, played in some of the decisions that you're going to make about college. I wonder what it feels like from your end, knowing that you are now impacting lives and, you know, their future aspirations. You know, so tell me what that's felt like for you being at 17 years old. Um, I feel like that's always been a part of me because when I was like two years old, my dad told me this. I was helping my sister raise money to build water wells in Africa. So we were standing outside in the summer heat selling brownies. When I was four years old, I would take toys that I got for Christmas and for my birthday that I didn't use and give it to kids at the nearest hospital near me. I think it was St. Jude's Hospital in Chicago. And so like helping others has always been a part of my life. I'm a selfless person. I'm not selfish. I love giving what I have. And so like giving back to my community, I think it's important. Look, I got big ideas. Right. I'm like, Dame Dash, I have big ideas that I'm trying to bring to impact the community. And so I know for a fact that you have through partnerships, through collaborations and through some of the mentors I have, I will be able to take that to the next level, because at the end of the day, it's not about me. I interviewed Miss Oprah Winfrey one time. She said that your life is just a piece of the puzzle of the greater universe. So every single decision that you make could potentially touch thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions. So when she said that, that stuck with me even to this day. And so knowing that every single decision I make in this moment could touch somebody that I'll never meet, that's powerful to me. And so I keep that at the back burner, keep that in the back of my mind and every decision I'm making. So that's why I move with the sense of purpose of focusing on helping others. So let's talk about like the business formation. Like how was it starting your business? How much help did you get? Um, and where are you at now as far as like the employees? What's your what's your day to day like business? Do you have like a CFO that you talk to or are you, what's your official title? You're the CEO? CEO and co-founder. So what's what's the business structure that you have in place right now? So in the beginning, it's funny because we had a three man team. It's me, my mom and my father, my dad. And so what we've been able to do is we've been able to actually take some of the students that have gone through our program and employ them to be some of the mentors that we have. And so one of the things like it's challenging as a, as a startup because not having necessarily the resources or the funding, it's always tough. I mean, obviously you meet, need money to grow a business, but in from day to day, we're always working on different projects. Like for this summer, we have different one week in-person programs that we're working on to travel to different states to teach our programs. This fall or no, no, this winter, we're working on Teen Tech Live 3.0 to onboard 50,000 kids virtually. For that program also the personal brand like my personal brand and dream hustle code and so having a team around me of my parents and also some of the team members that have gone through our program at dream hustle code that we employed that's really it but it's a small team it's not as big as you would think we have like five to seven members on board but in terms of everything that we do i'm responsible for everything marketing building the program making sure that i teach the students as well and everything else, that's a part of what my job requirement is at Dream Hustle Code. Yeah, so one of the, the pieces that you have added to it, and I don't know if you had this last time, was the Dream Hustle Code book. What inspired that, and, and how do people, how are they re receiving it thus far? So, okay, this project started in 27, 2016, and the idea for that came when we were doing in-person programs. See, one of the things that we noticed was that whenever a kid came across a challenge or they came across, across a problem that just looked too hard and difficult, they wanted to give up and quit. And so I've been learning personal development since I was four years old. Like yesterday, or yeah, yesterday I had the chance to interview uh, or to be on a podcast with Dr. Eric Thomas, my favorite motivational speaker. And so I've been listening to motivational speak speakers, motivational videos since I was four. And so we came up with the idea, what if I interviewed different, highly successful people, took the lessons that they learned from their stories and then write it in the book through the voice of a kid. And so in the beginning, we came up with a list of 300 highly successful individuals. We just put everybody down, billionaires, millionaires, famous people, business women, men and women, entrepreneurs, you name it. And so to this day, I've interviewed 50 plus highly successful people from Miss Oprah Winfrey to Mr. Steve Harvey, to even the founder of BET, Mr. Bob Johnson, a real estate mogul, Mr. R. Donahue Peebles, and a bunch of other amazing individuals that have allowed me to interview them and take their lessons. But from those experiences, I mean, it's still a journey that I'm working on now. There's still other interviews I'm working on from Mr. Magic Johnson to Mr. Robert F. Smith 
and others. But that book, I mean, it all stemmed from really just, again, it comes back with trying to help others with the mindset development. Because as you know this, if you don't believe that you can do something, it's never going to happen. So it started with just trying to reshape the mindset from kids in my generation and to believing that technology is for them and to believing in themselves as well. So um, after somebody is finished with your, how long is your program? So we have actually different programs. So we have our after school program, which runs from the fall all the way to the spring. Then we have our summer program, which is six to eight weeks. That is all virtually. Now we do because of the pandemic. I mean, we're now opening it up and we're now going back in person. But we actually have one week intensive programs of eight hours a day. And so that operates in one week programs in different cities. So we got one in Florida coming up. We might have one in Chicago this summer. And then the final program that we're working on is a one to two year program that will take kids literally from the beginning to educating with them with all the skill sets needed to be pipeline in the cybersecurity jobs or jobs generally in just the tech space. So it's not just one program. It's like four different programs individually depending on how old you are and depending how deep you actually want to go. So what would you say um, in an ideal world after somebody is finished with your program, what kind of skills will they have or what, what, what will they be able? So going through our six to eight week virtual program, they will be able to build their own websites and web development. Um, and they will also be able to have an introductory into creating their own video games because a lot of kids, they like video games. They love Minecraft, Fortnite. I love 2K myself. I'll handle anybody on the sticks. If y'all want to play me, we can get to it. <laughs> but, you know, having those introductories into building a website as well as video games. And so for our two-year program, that program is based off of connecting with those companies who need that employment, right? Who need that employment in cybersecurity. They'll be able to be workforce ready when they come out of that two-year program to come into a job. Because again, not every kid is not going to college. I'm taking a gap year. Not every kid sees college as a, a value or sees college as an opportunity for them, but they still want to go get a well-paying job. And so that's what our one to two year program or program and project that I'm working on will give them into that opportunity to be able to be placed into the workforce. Yeah, I want to go back for two seconds because now that I think about it, yeah, you did have a partnership with McDonald's early. Then you had the commercial for the Future 22 program. And so I'm wondering, is there a long-term relationship here with McDonald's where they're aligned with your mission for the future? And if so, how do we learn more about Future 22? Because I'm sure there's somebody out there right now is like, hey, I want to be part of this. Absolutely. So McDonald's, they're definitely in line. They're like family over here. I've been <laughs> working with them for the last two years. So we always want to build those long-term relationships. And so McDonald's is one of our own long-term relationships. And so for those of you who are interested in Future 22, for more information on McDonald's Future 22, you can follow We Are Golden on Instagram, as well as check out the remaining Future 22 specialists or honorees on McDonald's YouTube channel as well.